Getting weird, getting weird. Oh boy. <laughs> oh my. Not weird at all. <laughs> Evil light rock. annoyed yet these are some weird patches
what the heck is that rhythm? That's not what I'm here to do. I am going to try to produce and record a, a take to Driving Pop Rock from Jim Riley's Survival Guide for Modern Drummer, which is track three from his play along um, supplements. Uh, we'll listen to it first. Two, one, two, three, four. Sounds like an 80s car race or something. Tom Cruise should be in this one. Look at this. Alright. Got some decisions to make. Get my handy sheet music here. Which is a blank piece of paper. Pretty relentless eighth notes. Sixteenths might be unnecessary, maybe some of the fills, maybe not. Okay. Alright. The gist of it. Solo. Yeah, so it stays driving the whole time. That we know. Intro. Drums in or whole notes? I think whole notes. Then come in here. Because this is still an intro. Correctly, it comes back down. Verse. All right, so that's the first 30 seconds. We'll say whole notes. Crash. 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 In. Groove. Four. Five. 
six, seven, eight, first. Tightens up, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Something comes in now. Adds a guitar for another eight. I probably just stay where I'm at. Let that guitar be what's added. I don't have to change anything. All right, now what? Chorus, I guess? All right, open it up a bit. That's eight. All right, play we're gonna do two cycles. Eight, and then intro two, four, five, six, seven. Is it going to come back down? Yep, another verse. This time the keys are added. Five, six, seven. Now is it going to be another repeat or straight to the chorus? Add the guitar back. Four, five, six, seven, I guess straight to the chorus. Boom. Question is, what do I do? Do I change? Do I stay? Do I open up? Do I keep it closed? That's eight. Another repeat. Now where's it go? Eight coming up. Next section. Solo. Over the chorus. Six, seven, eight. Adds the synth, of course. Some Top Gun stuff right here. Another eight. Now what? Stop. Back to the intro one. Hits. Hits. And build. Build second time. Chorus, I guess. Eight. Now what? So repeat. Changes, here comes eight. Now what? It's a repeat chorus with a guitar. And eight. Adds that synth. And eight. Now what? end. Boom. All right. Simple, predictable song form. Really no stops. It just repeats. It goes back to the intro with the hits after the solo, which is very typical breakdown kind of vibe. So here's what I got to decide. Do I want to play this four on the floor or do I want to play this one and three? Do I want to play maybe the choruses? an intro for four on the floor and the verses one and three. Do I want to open the hi-hat at all? Do I want to keep it kind of tight? Do I want to go to the ride cymbal? So this is a case of, let me just play and see what naturally feels right without thinking too much. Because what I'm talking about is, um, we could have this groove. Simplify it. So what I'm going to try is four on the floor for the louder sections, one and three on the verse, minimal 
fills, maybe never fully opening the hi-hat. We'll just see how it sounds. I, I'm, I'm thinking to approach this. The drums are driving the bus, and it's when the guitars come in, the keys come in, that that's the, the color changes, where I don't want to necessarily change too much. Just kind of keep driving, minimal fills, minimal offbeat stuff, minimal open hi-hat things that could kind of pull the feel back. So I want to like lean forward and see what happens. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> I'll get your blood pumping. Um, so I think my natural instincts were okay with where to go. What's up, Joshua? Thanks for tuning in. Glad you're digging these. I've been wanting to do all these play lungs for a long time. I'm just kind of share my approach to building parts. I'm glad you're digging it. 
So what did I think first time through? Full on the floor, I like it. That would be something that the artist or producer or songwriter would have to weigh in on um, to kind of give the chorus a little push without adding too many subdivisions. Um, the verses I thought were cool. Um, I did instinctually add accents on the chord changes in the choruses, which just follows like the intro hits. Accent on the first bar, third bar, fourth bar. That was just instinctual. The solo going to the ride symbol again just felt like that's something I needed to do to change it up. Um, same thing in the last chorus repeat. It, the solo then comes back in, so I went to the ride. Um, I did Biff uh, crash because this thing got in the way, <laughs> which is unnecessary. There's a pro tip. Anything you don't need on your kit, get rid of it. It's just going to distract you. I didn't play, well, I did play the floor tom a couple times. If I wasn't going to do any toms, I might even just get rid of the toms so they're not sympathetically vibrating and getting picked up by all the mics. Um, any other comments I had for myself? I mean, I think that a song like that, um, I, I'm very cognizant of not doing anything that will keep the rhythm from going forward. So a lot of times open hi-hats on the end of four, which is kind of natural for drummers to do, that kind of like pulls the, the groove off, off kilt. Um, and I think I did one of those going into the second verse or something, and it took a minute for me to kind of find the feel. So I would minimize that stuff, keep everything quarter note driven. Um, fills, maybe I would do a take with less fills, like no fills, just to see if that's all it needed. And then, then I would do a take with a, a bunch more, like 60 note fills going into the different sections. So we have options. Um, Man, it's a relatively simple song. It's hard to keep that thing on the front edge, especially the choruses, even though it's the chorus and it, it should have more energy. Because of what happens, the tambourine, everything kind of opens up. The tambourine opens up. I think the shaker might be gone. The, the chords aren't as chuggy chuggy. So that can be kind of a little hard to navigate. It was a little hard to navigate to kind of keep it feeling like it's driving and not not back off just because the other instruments are playing fewer subdivisions. That's my observation for myself. Now I would ask the producer, which would be you, um, if it all worked. What's up, Harold? Uh, what I'm hearing is what you're hearing. No click. You're literally hearing the exact same mix as me. So the drums, the track, all coming straight into this mixer, into the interface. So no trickery. I don't like hide a click in here. So if it, it sounds like I'm better than I am, but I'm just playing to a click. No, I'm just playing to the track. There's enough rhythmic information in there that I don't need a click. Plus, if this was the final track and they were wanting me just to put drums on it, a click could be distracting. It could pull me out of the, out of the feel. So yeah, highly recommend playing along the play along tracks with no click. They've definitely recorded to a click, but I would not superimpose a click over top of this. Just learn how to play with the music. Listen, listen deeply, intently, commit to your groove, but also make micro adjustments that aren't is noticeable that aren't noticeable, but you know you're making them. I have to just change my little rash guard cover here. So yeah, good question. That's something I've, I'm I'm gonna get on my soapbox soon about to click or not to click. So yeah, you're hearing what I'm hearing. I'm gonna just do another take to see if I can beat that without thinking too much. Hit me up with any questions if you have any. The song is four minutes long. I'm gonna sweat another one out. Two, one, two. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs>
Sorry about that. I had it on the, uh, the close-up talking camera almost the whole time. Not the most exciting thing to watch. So what I do in that, that take, um, a little bit more aggressive in the course with the open hi-hat. But what I'm doing there, very deliberately, even though I'm playing open hi-hat, I'm trying to not hit it too hard and I'm trying to drive the groove actually with the kick. So this is what I did. versus a more punk rock approach. I'm trying to get the hi-hat to kind of swish under the kick, almost as if there was a side chain compressor, meaning every time the kick hit, the hi-hat was kind of ducking. Oh. That kind of a thing. Um, is the assumption that the song is instrumental, no singing? I'm assuming, in my mind, these imaginary sessions I'm doing here, there will be vocals, but it's just not on the track yet because there's just not enough. It's not an instrumental song, unless it's like a, it's like a soundtrack or something, for like voiceovers or a commercial. So I'm approaching as if there will be vocals, we just don't know what they are yet. So staying out of the way, only you know, just playing the arrangement, not trying to like be the featured artist because... Not knowing what the vocal is going to be, if I play a bunch of crazy fills, odds are I'm going to be stepping all over the vocal. So, in my mind, this imaginary scenario, we are getting basic tracks to then put vocals on later. Which means to keep it simple, super simple, always. So I did that differently, like driving the kick in the chorus with a much more sloshy hi-hat. I also treated the intro sections, the interludes, more like the chorus, so kind of that if the chorus just carries over into the interludes before we bring it back down to the verse. What else did I do? Some Stuart copeland -y kind of ride cymbal stuff. I don't think it's going to make the cut. I probably wouldn't do that during the um, second half of the solo. Ding, 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 ding. Maybe, maybe not. It, may, it didn't feel necessary. Um, but it was just an instinctual thing because I listened to the police so much. Stuart Copeland is such a massive influence that whenever I play anything in this kind of tempo, I go into his mode often. Yeah, I asked because it was a choice of time to use crash. Yep. Um, in this case, I'm only crashing during section changes the starts of the section changes and big kind of chord hits in the chorus. So there shouldn't be anything about that that would get in the way of a vocal. But, you know, that would be something for the producer to say, hey, let's, let's do no chord, no crashes leading into the verse or no crashes inside the chorus, just, just at the start of sections. That's a simple, that's a simple note that obviously I will, I will do if asked to. But I'm just trying to give you all all the bass. Like these are what I'm these are things I'm hearing that sound natural. We can add or subtract from here. It's a fun song. Um, again, Jim Riley, survival guide for the modern drummer. Probably the best play along package sort of essential grooves book out there. Um, there's some things in it that I think. I would do differently or omit or add, but in general, it covers all the bases. If you can get through that, all the grooves in that book, you can probably play just about any gig, except for like a, a really modern jazz gig or something. That's a totally different universe. That's track number three, Driving Pop Rock. Um, I don't feel like I want to do it again. I think at this point I would, I would deliver those two takes as reference, like, hey, is this the vibe? Let me know what you want to do differently, or more or less of, and then I would probably do one more pass, incorporating whatever notes I get, you know, the feedback. Because in those two cases, those two tracks, I gave the option of four on the floor in the chorus only, four on the floor in the interludes as well, um, and then what I didn't do 
is a version with the chorus not playing four on the floor. So let me just do a, I'll do like the first couple minutes of it with a, with a not four on the floor groove and then we can decide. Yeah, it's definitely Jim counting off the track. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> to go ahead and do a whole take because it was feeling right and I think that might be the the approach one thing I definitely noticed that was cooler was after that first chorus where it goes back to the intro um, I kind of did a what did I do so the chorus groove
if you can hear the difference. So for that re-intro, I did kind of a more, more like deliberate eighth note kind of Marky Ramon kind of thing coming out of that first chorus, and it felt right not having the four on the floor. So I'll do four bars of the chorus groove to that intro groove. See if you can see what's happening with the hi-hat. So basically the entire drum arrangement is really coming from what I do on the hi-hats because the kick and snare is a few more extra lead-in eighths, but it's pretty much one and three, two and four. So everything comes to be about, like the verse is very chunky closed. Strong quarter note. Chorus sloshy with a quarter note. Re-intro choppy, but open. And then for the solo, I want very deliberate eighth notes on the ride. Versus something more quarter note heavy. I just felt like that's where it wanted to go to kind of give us, I think maybe the something comes out, maybe the shaker's out, to kind of chug it, chug the eighth notes a little bit more, give it more of like a war on drugs kind of sound. Um, yeah, so it all, this whole arrangement is determined by what, how to play the eighth notes with the right hand. It sounds really simple, but there's a lot of subtlety and not so subtle things you can do. So I would suggest practicing that. Literally, just watch Jeff Picaro's um, instructional video from like 1989 or whatever on YouTube last night. And this is a section of him. There's a section in there of him talking. Um, What's up, Anthony? Yeah, quarter note heavy would wash out the sound. During, yeah, during the solo, I didn't want the, the ride cymbal to be washy. I wanted it to be distinct but just a different sound. So it would go from high ass to something else distinct. I probably would even use a dryer. This is a pretty dark, washy ride. Might use something a little bit pingier. But anyway, in the Picaro video, that's one of the sections. He talks about shaping the groove with the hi-hat. And here we are. Literally didn't intend to have that directly impact what I played today, but that's what this track, in my opinion, is the whole art of this track is playing a simple groove. You know, four or five different ways. The kick and the snare volume dynamically is the same because it's, it's driving rock and roll. You don't want the kick to be quieter. The kick has to be strong and push. The backbeat has to be strong. So you only really have your timekeeping limb to determine the dynamics and the, the propulsion and the pulse of it. So I'm thinking heavy quarter notes in the verse and chorus, sloshy eighths in the interlude, pingy, consistent eighths during the solos, and then take it out. Those big hits, like maybe there'd be drum fills in between them. Again, I don't know what would end up being, if this is the final, there's no more overdubs gonna happen except for vocals, then maybe I would do more fills in, in those big gaps. But my default is just hit them. Just hit the accents, let it breathe, because then there might be something else happening in the vocal thing, or another instrument. I like to leave space for other instruments to do the cool stuff because a drum fill is a drum fill, but if it's something unexpected on a key or a guitar, I just think that's more interesting. 
I'd rather leave more space for that, my opinion. <clears throat> so yeah, if you haven't checked out that Jeff Picaro video, I don't know what it's called. He only did one. I think it was how Leonard put it out. So it's available on YouTube. It's him and, and David Garfield, and I think his brother Mike Picaro is playing bass. Definitely 80s, definitely a lot of mullets, definitely a lot of reverb, but it's the drumming is the truth. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's driving pop rock. I just did three takes. That's all I would do for a session before I would get, you know, any feedback. I wouldn't do any more than that because I'm kind of beating it to the wall at that point. So, yeah. We'll do another one tomorrow. If you have any questions, let me know now. Otherwise, I'm going to hop off here. I've got an early gig, so I've got to get some work done before I hit the road. Um, I do still want to flesh out this Afrobeat vibe. So I've got to figure out the tempo that I like. Sure, if I like the piano in there. What if I take the piano out? Track one, mute. Hey, thanks, Anthony. Appreciate you. Yeah, this kit is sounding really nice now. I think I found its happy spot. Low, beefy, a little bit of dampening. Single ply coated, kick batter, uh, Caftone logo, front head, two of the Remo, um, whatever those Dave Weckl sausage muffler things, 22 inch one on the batter side, 22 inch one on the front side, just a, a old bath towel kind of draped in the middle to, to cover the, the rest of the bottom of the shell. Tuned, I would say med medium low. The toms are low. As of yesterday, these were all tuned to you know, F sharp or C sharp. So F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, F sharp. They're probably falling out a little bit, but that's, that's where they were at. Awesome, man. Have a good day. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget to like it and hit the whatever it is, notification button or whatever so you don't miss out because I'm bad about promoting this stuff. What is tomorrow? Tomorrow's Thursday noon. I will be back on again at noon tomorrow. Till then, get a copy of this book, start jamming along, and I'll see you later.